Good morning, people. I hope everyone is hanging in there around the world, wherever you happen to be hanging in. Um, it is, to some, <laughs> of course, frustration that the conversations that we'd had in such detail here from a year ago are now deleted. That That's tiresome. Because, again, I, I'm the kind of guy that likes to, to predict the future. That's part of being a mariner. Predicting the future is part of being a good mariner and a navigator. You have to do that. It's not a, it's not something that you can neglect. To make good passages requires being able to anticipate changes in weather and wind and tide, and it's just part of the business. One gets accustomed to doing that, and they, and one does that uh, in all aspects of one's life. One of the primary ways of uh, developing personal confidence with one's prediction is to uh, make those predictions um, overt and express them out loud and record them because you will discover that there are mistakes that you might consistently make and that there are um, things that you typically get right in fact that you might have a rather nuanced nose for over time but of course, if your logbooks are stolen, that's a bit of a setback because, um, well, our memories aren't as good as we think a lot of the time. But a lot of you were here with me and we discussed it all together and I guess we'll carry on. I mean, the primary prediction that I was making early last year was this, that uh, the year that we were under, 2021, in spite of the fact that we were in the throes of a pandemic, would be the last normal year for the rest of our lives, meaning that we could anticipate to be able to um, think that the future would be much like it was in the past, and those days are gone. Um, we talked in great de detail about why those days would cease to exist, and it appears that they have ceased to exist. So... Again, you know, as we go forward in the conversation now, um, I want to keep the uh, conversation more practical and talk about what is happening rather than what might happen. In a lot of ways, we're kind of beyond the event horizon of predictability, with the exception of knowing that the controlled power down is a thing. It's not something that we... Uh, anticipate will happen in the future. It is something where the trigger has been uh, literally and figuratively pulled. And we are in a situation where to drive civilization into a controlled collapse state over time while elite interests still manage and profit by um, the whole set of circumstances. Well, this is what's going on. It's not too hard to see if you look. But there are things that we can take away from that, and in spite of it being an ugly and kind of disastrous moment that I had hoped that uh, over the last 20 years, that with a little education and encouragement we could avoid, well, hell, it's here. So, but knowing that it's here, um, now if we batten down the hatches, we can ride out to the best of our abilities. There are things that we will know now that were uncertain a year ago and uh, a prudent navigator can plan for those. See and my whole conjecture all along was very simple. It's like you know scarcity is a thing, overpopulation is a thing, overshoot is a thing. We have run out of space um, and resource not only to extract value but to dispose of waste. That's where we're at. There are no technical solutions to that issue. At least none in an entropic sense don't create just as much waste as they produce. Like this has been known for a long time, but it's been a really good party and there was a lot of reasons to kick the can down the road just as far as possible. Um, Certainly, we little peons were happy with that and definitely elite interests were happy with that because they enjoy the economy of scale being uh, perpetrated and carried forward into the world as long as possible. There's benefits to be had of that, but there would come a final sunset where that could be uh, maintained. 
and here's why um, whether the trigger is uh, adverse weather effects or whether that's famine or whether that's warfare or whether that's economic collapse or whether that's destruction of economies because of debt burden demographics who knows could be any of those things there comes a final point in which conflict can be managed because the pressures within the system become so large that there's a risk of spontaneous and organic emergence of conflict but not conflict that serves elite interests and there's a risk there in the collapse environment that non-elite interests might be able to create circumstances that would threaten the power of elite interests this is their concern so they have to front run that because if you know that you're going to have large-scale conflict due to real conditions of scarcity overpopulation and overshoot if you know that's going to happen then you need to have the conflict on terms that benefit you which means that you will need to engineer those conflicts before there's an opportunity for them to spontaneously arise that's been my conjecture all along and not only that that far before any of us really in a meaningful sense uh, face hunger or wildfires or who knows what from you know the basic organic underlying principles I mean certainly some of us have faced that to some degree I mean obviously last summer was kind of a rough one so was the fall here due to um, climatic issues for me manageable though but I mean the primary thing that I'm going to face that is difficult are the consequences of conflict that's what happens first And knowing that uh, provides some advantages, in fact, because now that we know that it's game on and that uh, the controlled power down is the thing, we don't have to ask ourselves the question whether our future is going to look more like Mad Max or the Hunger Games. It's going to be the Hunger Games. And the uh, kind of strategies that one uh, adopts in order to... Um, best navigate those futures are different really right so for example I can promise you that for the rest of our lives regardless of the ecological impacts diesel is going to be the primary fuel of humanity that choice has been made now it's going to be expensive and it's going to be a luxury item for many people in the days of Joe lunchbox driving a big diesel dually are over and there will be rationing and it's going to be very hard for commercial fishermen to make a living and power yachts are going to be a thing of the past and all of that but it's going to be the fuel because it is the most efficient in fact the most green fuel and the uh, the silly cynicism about pretending otherwise and other silly magical thinking opportunities are now off the table while there's tanks on the ground diesel are going to uh, Diesel's going to be a big thing. While you got jet aircraft flying around bombing places, diesel's going to remain a big thing, and that's permanent. And uh, as long as elite interests want to fly fighter aircraft and drive tanks, there isn't any possible way for there to be any kind of uh, change towards a different future. So what about the uh, ecological impacts of that? Well that's going to be offset by having a radically smaller population and especially a radically smaller population of high consumption individuals right that's the choice but what it does also mean is that the basic mechanisms of technological society like engines and like semiconductors and basic industrial stuff even though the economy is going to be radically scaled down they will still exist 
I mean, the alternative would be a uncontrolled, unmitigated collapse state where things simply became unavailable because of uh, unmanaged collapse. Now, I don't see that being the case at all. They're managing it very well. What we will see are circumstances in which diesel might be rare, rationed, hard to come by, just like everything else. But um, all of those basic things that we currently enjoy, I expect, will remain available to you if you are highly functioning enough to be able to maintain the prosperity to afford them. So I'm flying my pirate flag hard this morning, feeling good. Um, I've pretty well recovered my, uh, my injury from uh, compelled medications last year. So things are back on in the springtime, the boat's looking good and I'm cleaning things up. Feeling uh, prepared for the moment as best as I am able. Um, my intent here again is to uh, seek peers who are interested in this worldview and perhaps particip could be participants and co-participants in this process. There is a desperate need for individuals who are forward-thinking, intelligent, life-affirming, um, to carry a banner forward representing the better aspects of uh, human civilization, which are an appreciation for what we've been discussing. <laughs> Liberty, fraternity, equality, sovereignty, empowerment, this stuff. This is going to be hard to remember here pretty quick as we move into this um, dystopian future. But there is a mission there, and there is a calling there for any of us that would take that up. Um, it's going to be difficult. I am fully aware at the power and reach of the propaganda mechanisms that dominate the world. Not only were the last couple of years through um, the plague difficult, this moment is difficult too. I am astonished by how conditioned the average individual, regardless of what their ideology might be, how quick they are to unquestionably pick up a thought product of a narrative or something. Anyway, believe me, the, uh, the troops of your enemy are in the streets. They are your neighbors, they are your peers. They unfortunately, unconsciously, have picked up the weapons um, of conflict and they've done so due to the calling of their masters, those that signed their paychecks and where they lie their tribal identities, you know. Um, and again, they do it completely unconsciously. It's disturbing, um, but um, there's another way. And uh, as we go forward, I hope to, uh, again, wave that banner a little bit and provide another perspective that might be more independent and perhaps empowering to individuals that would have the courage to embrace it. Anyway, just a quick note. Cheers, people. Have a good day.